Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Itagaki. I'm a board-certified interventional radiologist and 3D printing enthusiast. In this brief tutorial, I will show you how to prepare a digital model for 3D printing. Specifically, I will show you how to remove extraneous mesh from the medullary cavity of bones using the software package Blender in preparation for 3D printing. Before we dive in, Let's take a moment to discuss what the medullary cavity is and why it is a problem if you're trying to 3D print bones from a CT scan. Bones are not solid, even though they may appear to be so. Most bones have a very hard, very dense outer layer made of cortical bone. The inner core of the bone contains bone marrow and is made of much softer bone that is less dense. On a CT scan, you can see these different types of bones. Take this CT scan of the pelvis, for example. The hard and dense cortical bone is seen as this white outline. The bone is bright white, which indicates that it is very dense. The less dense and fatty bone marrow containing spongy bone can be seen within the center of the iliac bone here and the sacrum here. This bone is not white, but rather a grayish color. In some areas, it is approaching black in color. Outside the bone, we can see muscle, which is indicated by this grayish color over here and over here. And intra-abdominal fat is represented by this dark gray color. If we measure the density of the bones in Hounsfield units, which is the unit of density um, that is measured on a CT scan, we can see that very dense cortical bone here measures 768 Hounsfield units. The less dense medullary bone over here, which contains bone marrow and a lot of fat, measures 1.7 Hounsfield units. We can see over here the muscle of the gluteus maximus, uh, which is in the buttocks area, measures about 51 Hounsfield units. So in this case, the medullary bone is actually less dense than the muscle around it. This causes a problem when trying to convert CT scan data into a digital model that is 3D printable. Here is an example of the 3D model of the pelvis and lumbar spine created from the CT scan we were just looking at. I've imported the STL file into Blender. It looks pretty good, right? Well, if you look closely, you can see that there's a lot of internal geometry within the bones. Let's go to edit mode and zoom in. What's that? Well, that's within the medullary cavity of a lumbar vertebra or a lumbar vertebral body. And you can see that there's a lot of extraneous mesh. Real bones are not solid, and when the CT scan data was converted into the STL file, the architecture of the medullary cavity was included as well. So, how did this happen? If we look very closely at the CT scan, we can see that there are tiny defects within the bone. Here's an example of a lumbar vertebral body. Let's look a little bit closer. Can you see that? These little defects right here? These are called nutrient foramina. They are tiny holes within the surface of the bone that allow blood vessels to enter through the hard outer cortex into the medullary cavity. When the CT scan data was converted into an SDL file, the surface generating algorithm crawled through these tiny holes and mapped the medullary cavity. This is the source of that extraneous mesh in our digital model. And if we're going to 3D print this model, we don't want this extraneous mesh. Fortunately, removing this mesh, if we go back to Blender, is relatively straightforward. So let's dive in to how we do that. The first thing you need to do 
is import your STL file into Blender. So I've gone ahead and imported the file here. Go to edit mode and hit the Z button to show the mesh. So we can see in this model that there are a bunch of areas where extraneous medullary mesh is included in the model. Here's some on the iliac crest and on the other iliac bone and several of our vertebral bodies also have extraneous mesh. So let's get rid of that. The first thing you want to do is choose a site to work at and eliminate all this extraneous mesh that you're not working on or the extra mesh so it doesn't get in your way. So what I'm going to do is hold down the control button and select an area of mesh to work at. I'm going to focus on this vertebral body to start with. Then hit the control I key to invert the selection and H to hide it. So now I'm going to select it again. Control I and H to hide. Now it's looking pretty good. I still want to get rid of some of this mesh so it's out of the way. Oops. Let's hide that. Hit H to hide and hide that. And hide that. Okay. <clears throat> now if we hit the Z key again, we can see our mesh a little bit more clearly. And if you look, you can see that there are these two tiny little defects right over here that are connecting this medullary cavity to the surface. So the way we get rid of those is we'll go to face select mode <clears throat> And what I'm going to do is hold down the control key and just select a loop around this entire area, a loop of faces, <clears throat> and delete it. So I'm going to hit the delete key, I'm going to delete vertices. Oh, you know what? I take that back. I'm going to delete faces. Okay. Now I've got this, I'm going to delete this one too. I've got this big hole, so I'm going to go to edge selection mode, hold down the alt key and select one of these edges and it should select all the way around that hole. To fill it in, add a face. Hit the F key, there we go, and then to convert that to triangles, which I recommend, control T. And now if we hit the A to unselect everything, we've closed in that loop. I'm going to go to face select mode and select around this face as well. And hit delete and F for faces. I'm going to go to edge selection mode, alt and select the edge with the right mouse button hit F to convert the fi uh, to fill the face in and control T. Okay, so now I've cut those holes and disconnected that internal mesh from the uh, surface. <clears throat> now if I go to vertex selection mode by clicking here and I select one of these vertices, see that? And hit, I want to select all of the vertices that are connected to that vertex and all of this medullary cavity should be disconnected from the surface so hit control L to select all and there you there you have it I've selected all of the internal mesh hit the delete key delete vertices boom now my medullary cavity is clean and this part of the mesh is closed 
So to show the mesh that I had hidden earlier, I'm going to hold the Alt key and hit H, and that will unhide everything else. Hit the A key to unselect, and A again selects all. So we can see that now that vertebral body is cleaned up. So if you repeat this for all your other areas where you have medullary mesh, you can um, completely get rid of all the extraneous mesh. Let's do the process again briefly. Control I inverts the selection, H hides it. I'm going to go over here, select this, hide that, select this, hide that, <clears throat> probably hide that, hide that. Make it easy for yourself and get rid of as much extraneous mesh as you can. And then here we are already. This one looks like it has four holes uh, to repeat the process. Go to face select mode. You can select it over here or hit control tab and numeral three. <clears throat> select around your area and it's okay if you get some extra uh, extra faces in there. Delete the face. Go to edge selection mode. Fill it in with an F, Control T to convert to triangles. Very easy to repeat this <clears throat> four times. I'm going to go fast now. Edge selection mode. Fill that in. Go back to face mode. Select around this hole, delete faces, edge selection mode. And then we've got one more hole to fill in. Delete faces. Okay. Let's see if we've totally disconnected this second medullary space from the rest of the mesh. Control L. <clears throat> Looks like we have. Delete vertices. Boom. Gone. Alt H unhides the rest of the mesh. Okay. So you get the point. Do this for all the areas of medullary cavity in your model and uh, although it, it can be a little bit time consuming if you have a lot of areas of um, um, medullary bone but um, if you look for where those sites of where the medullary component is attached to the surface through usually it's through some sort of perforating nutrient foramina uh, cut those out fill them in and then you can delete a lot of the mesh at the same time and this this saves a lot of time okay best of luck um, again if you are designing medical 3d models from CT scan data please consider sharing your models with the biomedical 3d printing community on embodied.com uh, a lot of uh, makers and uh, physicians and medical scientists are um, posting 3D models on the website and uh, we would appreciate it if you would consider contributing to the community. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. Thank you very much and happy 3D printing!